Good day everyone, Dr Polaris here, and I hope you all had a Merry Christmas despite it being 2020. Today's episode will be concerned with the true archosaurs. These reptiles first appeared during the early Triassic period in the aftermath of the Permian mass extinction, and would go on to dominate terrestrial environments for approximately 185 million years. Many well-known groups of extinct Mesozoic animals belong to this lineage, including the non-avian dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and the many bizarre crocodile cousins. The exact anatomical features that define Archosauria actually first appeared in more basal animals such as Euparcaria, but became more pronounced in true members of the clade. These include teeth set within deep sockets in the jaw, a pronounced ridge on the femur, known as the fourth trochanter, and two openings in the skull, one in front of the eyes and one in the jawbone, respectively. This set of features allowed for sturdier teeth, less likely to fall out while grappling with prey, while the fourth trochanter allowed for expanded muscle attachments to the limbs, enabling archosaurs to maintain an increasingly erect posture. It was this feature that enabled the development of bipedal and semi-bipedal locomotion in several unrelated groups of archosaurs. The open windows in the skull, known as fenestrae, reduced the overall weight of the skull and jaws, which tended to be large in early members of the group. All of these traits taken together suggest that ancestral archosaurs were active terrestrial carnivores, possessing mesothermic metabolisms and upright limbs. In modern times, archosaurs are represented by crocodilians and birds, with each group being representatives of the two major lineages of Pseudosuchia and Abimetatarsalia, respectively. We will cover the early Pseudosuchians in a minute, but there are fossil remains dating from the Triassic that may represent animals outside of these major clades. Most examples of these stem archosaurs are known from very fragmentary and poorly preserved remains, including teeth and mere scraps of bone. However, one genus in particular stands out in being rather better known, the bizarre and problematic Smok Waleski from the late Triassic of Poland. With the genus name meaning dragon in Polish, Smok was a large bipedal carnivore measuring up to 6 metres long, that is 20 feet, and was among the apex predators in its environment. It would have strongly resembled a theropod dinosaur, with a boxy skull and long counterbalancing tail. Fossil remains of the animal include a partial skull along with associated teeth, ribs, vertebrae, and semi-complete forelimbs and hindlimbs. The anatomical features present in the skeleton demonstrate a confusing mix of traits seen in both dinosaurs and pseudosuchians, with the phylogenetic position of Smok being very difficult to clarify. Other features of the genus seem to exclude it from these groups of archosaurs. The premaxilla and maxilla of the upper jaw attach closely to each other, making a continuous row of evenly distributed teeth. Unlike many pseudosuchians and theropods, Smok does not have pneumatic areas or air pockets in the bones or brain case. It also has several features that link it with more primitive archosauriforms, including the presence of a postorbital bone on the front of the skull. Therefore, it is my opinion that Smok is a stem archosaur, more basal than both Pseudosuchia and Avimetatarsalia. Whatever its tree position, this was a fascinating animal that demonstrates just how much convergent evolution and evolutionary novelty was occurring at this time. Indeed, the presence of these traits in a stem archosaur, like this, may indicate that all more derived forms evolved from ancestors much like Smok, albeit smaller and less specialised. This would make sense given that the earliest members of Pseudosuchia were also fluctuative bipeds, very much unlike their living crocodilian relatives. As a clade, Pseudosuchia contains a staggering diversity of forms from just the Triassic alone, and includes all archosaurs more closely related to crocodiles than to dinosaurs. These animals inhabited a variety of ecological niches, ranging from large terrestrial carnivores, semi-aquatic piscivores, small fast-running hunters, and heavily armoured herbivores. Some members of the clade Poposauroidea were also startlingly dinosaur-like, in being fully bipedal and with certain genera possessing toothless beaks. Pseudosuchians differ from their avimetatarsalian cousins in a number of ways, including a large and heavy nature of their skulls, the short and strong neck, the protective ridges of osteoderms along their back, and a variety of different limb postures. 
These traits were present in the most basal pseudosuchians, the Ornithosuchids. Hailing from the middle to late Triassic of Eurasia and South America, these were fluctuative bipedal carnivores with distinctively downturned snouts and active terrestrial lifestyles. Four genera are known, which tend to measure up to 4 metres or 13 feet long in length. Ornithosuchus itself was once thought to be ancestral to theropod dinosaurs, given its dinosaur-like skull and propensity for bipedal locomotion. However, these traits are now seen as convergent, with the animal only running on its hind legs during periods of high activity, spending most of its time walking on all fours. The jaws were heavily built and the skull was boxy, giving Ornithosuchus a powerful bite. It would have hunted smaller archosauriforms such as the Rhynchosaurs and herbivorous Dicynodonts. The three remaining genera were native to South America and have been suggested to have been scavengers due to their strong but slow moving jaws and fairly weak slender teeth. Unlike Ornithosuchus, Riochosuchus, Venaticosuchus and Dynamosuchus were more heavily built and primarily quadrupedal. The slightly more derived lineage of Pseudosuchians were the Gracilisuchids. As their name implies, these were significantly smaller and more slender animals than the Ornithosuchids, being active hunters and dwelling in the mid to late Triassic of China and Argentina. Gracilisuchus itself was tiny, measuring just 40 centimetres, 1.3 feet long, and weighing just 1.3 kilograms, or about 3 pounds. However, the skull was still proportionally large and was shaped like a capital letter D lying on its side complete with sharp, blade-like teeth. Although the forelimbs are not well known, they appear to have been small and weak when compared to the hind limbs, again suggesting a degree of semi-bipedality. The related Chinese Terphanosuchus possessed a peculiar combination of features which has made it difficult to classify in the past. The genus retained teeth on the palate, which is a feature very rarely seen in archosaurs, but common in more basal animals such as Euparcaria. On the other hand, the ankle and skull construction were far more similar to those of true archosaurs. For many decades, it and its close relatives were hard to place phylogenetically, but a 2014 study has suggested that the genus belongs to the family Gracilisuchidae in a basal position within Pseudosuchia. The limbs were slender and semi-erect, a feature also present in the similarly Chinese Yonghesuchus. All of these animals would have been active hunters of small prey shredding them with their monitor lizard-like teeth. Although these basal forms were entirely carnivorous, other lineages of Pseudosuchians would experiment with herbivory, a trajectory that will be covered in a future video. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll be back in the new year with an episode focused on more Alter Earth content, so I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.